Okay, I know a lot of people want to know about welding and welding inspection. And people ask me the question, should I become a welder? Well, that's a good question. And I'm going to tell you a funny story. Um, this was about 20, maybe 30 years ago. It's been a while. But uh, we was in high school and we was at the field house. That's the gym where we practice football and track and stuff like that. And it was about a quarter mile away from the school. So our coach came in and told us that we had to take an elective in order for us to pass. So the only thing that was open was the cooking class and I think a welding class. So everybody took off running because they wanted to make it to the cooking class because we heard that when you cook, you can eat the food you cook. So cakes and cookies and stuff. And me, I wasn't as fast as some of the other guys because if you know them country guys, they're really fast there in Jasper, Texas. So I didn't make it in time to get into the cooking class. So when I walked into the cooking class, she said, hey, there's no more room. The only thing available is a class across the room, which was a welding class. And I looked across there and the funny thing, I, I kind of, I didn't laugh, but I seen this tall white guy about six one, six two, named Bruce Gully. He had starched jeans and starched welding shirt. He had a cowboy hat. You know him in Jasper. I said, Lord have mercy, what I've, what I've gotten into, you know. So I didn't have no other option. So I walked into this welding class. And we all sit down. And the first thing he did, he took out the book and he told us what welding was. He said, welding is the art and science of joining metal together by the use of adhesive and cohesive attractive forces between metals. And right there, it, it caught my attention because he, he said it was an art and science. So I, I didn't want to take this class because, you know, I didn't have no boots, no welding shirts, and I couldn't dress like that, that dude. And so at the end of the class, I walked up to him. I said, Mr. Gully, I, I would like to take this class, but I don't know. I can't get a nice shirt like that or welding boots. And I'm going to tell you, you judge a person by the first thing you see. You know, that man took his shirt off his back and he gave me his boots. And from that, from that day forward, I put all my heart into it. I really enjoyed this welding. So I competed in the, the Skills Olympics. And I remember I got first place in the district. And I won district. You know, we do stick, MIG, TIG, and all of that. And I won district, and I won this, this medal right here. You get first place. If you win first place, you go to state. And then I competed in the state competition, and I actually won state. And what they do, they give you this gold medal. I thought it was real gold until it chipped off there at the bottom, but it's not gold. But I did get this gold medal right here for winning state in the Welding Skills Olympics. And I went to compete in nationals in Tulsa, Oklahoma the, the same year. I didn't, get, I didn't win the national. I got fourth place in that. But to advance to nationals was a big thing there in Jasper. You know, they even put it in the in the newspaper right here, as you can see, you know, Lewis advances to nationals to compete in the welding. And from there on, you know, opportunities start coming around. This man helped me more. I, I couldn't believe how much he put his heart into helping me. He helped me uh, get a scholarship. He helped me sign up for school to go to college in uh, Waco. And, and I really, welding wasn't, it wasn't the thing I wanted to do, but it was something to get me out, out of the country or get me out of my situation. You know, we didn't have much. So to get this opportunity to go to college on a scholarship, I did that. And then I got hired on at a company, you know, for automatic welding. It was CRC Evans at the time in 1992. And welding has been good to me. You know, I've had the opportunity to travel all over the world, you know, but people see my wife driving a Mercedes and they see a big house, my daughter, BMW, my son, Infinity. I'm driving my Toyota. That's the best vehicle out of all of them, the Toyota Tundra. But they, they see that, but they don't 
realize the struggles that I had to go through in this welding field. You know, I traveled all over the world. My first project, I went out in India, uh, worked out on a barge and I left when my wife was six months pregnant. And when I got back, my daughter was three months old. So this take a toll on relationships and believe it or not, me and my wife been married for going on 26 years now. But even going to India, you know, you have to take all of these shots. You got to take malaria pills. It's a lot of situations you have to put yourself in. Then right after that, I go on a job in Canada in Rainbow Lake, 40 below zero. As Soon as I leave Canada, a month later, I go to Saudi Arabia. And that's 100 plus degrees. So I'm going from one extreme to the other. And, and then I travel up in Morocco in the mountains and people don't understand the humidity when you're traveling up in those mountains and what you have to go through. And I actually passed out one day. <laughs> it was just so hot. I, I passed out. So it's been some struggles. It, it's been good money. But if a person want to make a, a lot of money, I say get into it, but identify what you want to do. And I tell all my students. And it's good. I know a lot of people say, hey, college is not necessary. You don't need to go to college to learn how to well. That might be true. But let me tell you, in this well welding field, it's a small field. It's not what you know, it's who you know. Like classes I teach, I'm an adjunct instructor. So I'm already out there in the field. So the students come in which they have connection like my brothers my brother worked with me <clears throat> at the crc three of my nephews five of my students it's not that they knew how to weld they were good welders it's that they knew me and i got them in with the company and i tell my students i noticed that as teaching as an adjunct welding instructor i'm teaching at night and most of these people are already working and some of the people just go to school there. Some of the older uh, guys or, or ladies, they already own their businesses. So they actually go on to school to learn and also look for employees. So they're looking in the class on some of these students, how smart they are, and they want to hire them. You, you'll be surprised. You know, I know people say the school is not necessary, but if you don't get that degree, you're going to only go so much in the company as a welder. You know, you can get your engineering degree, then you become managers and you can also get your master's degree in welding. It's it's a lot of stuff you can do in it. But yes, as a young man, a lady, if you want to make a lot of money and you want to travel, if that's what you want to do, I would recommend maybe going to school, getting that degree and get know somebody, know people like me, people like that's in the inspection field, people, welders. You got to know somebody because I can call somebody right now and say, hey, I need a job. They said the only thing they're going to ask me, hey, Lewis, when can you start? Because I know these guys and I treated them with respect and they treat me with respect. So this oil and gas field or this welding field, it is a small business. And like I said, it's not what you know, it's who you know. So if you know some people out there and you get in, you can make a good living out of it. And if you're a person that want to travel, and you can get into the company like I got into this automatic welding that we, we traveled all over the world. If you can travel for 10 years, making over 100000 a year, 10 years, save your money, you will be good. Then you could come back after 10 years and get into this inspection. You know, you don't want to weld all your life. You want to get into some inspection to where you can look at other people weld and monitor their welding. And like I said, should you become a welder? That's up to you. It's if you want to travel or if you want to be gone for a while, that's where the money is made at. Or if you want to go to chemical companies, because this welding field is up and down. It could be good for two years. The next year, the wheels could fall off. So that's a question you need to, I know you want to ask, and that's my advice on it. Yes, it's a good field. I've made a lot of money doing it. I've traveled the world. I've seen a lot of places. I know a lot of people and this business, like I said, it's, 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 it's the, what you know, it's not what you know, it's who you know. So like I said, do it for 10 years, 
I would, if I was you, I'm giving you some advice. Get out of it. Get your CWI certified welding inspector. And if you want to take some classes or some quizzes, I have a website at www.weldingandstuff.net. If you want to practice quizzes, test your knowledge. And if you're going to take this CWI exam, do not take it lightly. It is not easy. Most people, people fail. Part B, especially part B, because it's tricky. You only have 46 questions. And if you miss a number of those questions, you already fail because you can only make a 70. The minimum score is a 72. But you can visit my website and you can send me an email if you want questions or you can leave a comment below in this video about welding. So thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of your day. Don't forget to subscribe, like, turn on your notifications and share this video. Also leave comments. Thanks for watching. Welding and stuff.